I go by Slick, you're in West Compton. This is it, HQ. Welcome to my studio. Well, ever since I can remember, I was into art. I wasn't really good at uh, like athletics and things like that, and I just kind of pulled towards the art side. Being in Hawaii, that's where I'm from, we had a lot of military influence, so they had clubs and stuff, so we'd get the music from like the East Coast and stuff pretty early, and that's where I got my taste of like b-boying and things like that. The natural progression out of that was graffiti. That was like the element that I gravitated to because um, I definitely sucked at b-boying. You know, I couldn't do all the power moves these cats are doing. I mean, I could pop a little and, and pop lock and stuff, but eh, when it came to power moves, I just, you know, couldn't pull it. So my power moves became the walls. Graph was my, my everything. You know, everything else, my relationships or school or money or anything was all secondary. It was just about getting up and about painting on shit, you know? At an early age, I learned to put my art on shirts. I was submitting to like these art contests that Crazy Shirts would put out. I mean, I'm talking like junior high and I look at some of the stuff, you know, my parents saved everything and it was kind of like some ridiculous, stupid concepts and I'm surprised they even gave me the time of day. Well, it was just ironic because I was doing a lot of graph at the time and the head of the graffiti task force was the owner of Crazy Shirts. So, I guess he felt like his good deed was to take this kid off the streets and show him, you know, what a real art department is and maybe a career in clothing. It wasn't until I moved to Los Angeles and I was going to school when I teamed up with a, another um, partner of mine, this guy Risky, and, and this other kid Dante, and we did a company called Third Rail. Before it got ugly with mine and Kelly's friendship, or Risky's friendship, me and Dante decided to, to bow out and, and I ended up doing a company uh, called fucked with uh, Eric Bernetti. Back then was the first time that I started seeing hints of Obey because Shepard used to send us stickers of that little Andre guy and I was just like, who the fuck is this like this, you know, and he was real persistent. He would always send it to us, you know, but I, you know, at the time I was just so into my own, like, you know, I didn't really give it much thought. And then I started seeing him like get up. The school of graph I was from was all about spray paint and burners and it was more that type of graph but meanwhile this whole little culture was was starting to brew the, with the stickers and the, and the wheat pasting things i was seeing that this person could get up with with doing posters or stickers just as much or even more so in a quicker way than we could with doing crazy ass burners that would take us hours and hours to execute and this guy could just wheat paste a whole side of a building like that or just wipe a whole city in one night and stuff. So it's just crazy how the whole Obey thing just <laughs> like the collaboration was really important. To me, it kind of marks, you know, a me of a changing of kind of an attitude where I'm at in my life and not so negative and stuff, even though the capsule I call disobey or whatever. But to me, it's not. It works perfect because it's this is it and obey and you know it's it's what we do and if anybody's gonna disobey i think it should be me you know what i'm saying because i was like the number one hater you know what i'm saying so i think it's rad that he was open to it and you know down to kill it to me is super dope